This is Lake of the Woods. And today I'm gonna to be riding my jet powered sled all the way from here over 40 miles of ice to the Angle, the northernmost point in the contiguous United States. All right, let's go. But you might be wondering why. And don't worry, we'll get back to the run in just a minute. While the angle is technically part of the US, getting there is tricky. Going by land means clearing Canadian customs twice, and the only alternative is crossing the lake. First attempted by Eric, I tried it myself last year, but whiteout conditions and freezing fuel forced me to stop just 19 miles from shore. So at this point, it's a personal grudge to beat the lake and become the first YouTuber to reach America's northmost point. And I do mean first, because it turns out Eric hasn't technically been there either, because what we thought was the angle was actually Oak Island. But to pull this off, I need a better sled, and I think I found the perfect place to build it. This is Kai Michelson. My name is Kai Michelson. Better known as the Rocket Man. And for over 50 years, he's been engineering rocket vehicles for both himself and some of the greatest stunt people on Earth. Kai himself claims over 120 state and national land speed records, and he's built vehicles for many others, like stuntwoman Kitty O'Neill, the fastest woman on Earth until 2019, or his son Buddy. Yes, that's a seven-year-old flying a jetpack. Of course, it's not without precedent. Is the whole family involved in stunts like this, Kai? That's right, our family has been uh, in the thrill business since 1905, since my great uncle had come off a ski jump on a bicycle. In addition to the cars, the bikes, and the Pulse Jet coffee maker, he's even got a full-size dinosaur skeleton tucked away in his bedroom. I'd heard legends of Kai as the first civilian to ever put a rocket into space, but it wasn't until I met his son Buddy while delivering the world's largest pizza cutter that I found out he lives in Minneapolis, just six hours from the angle. So when they agreed to let me stay at their house and use their workshop for the sled build, I knew it had to be fate. That is amazing. With the world's greatest civilian rocket shop at my disposal, the rest was up to me, starting with a fresh design. Jet V1 was definitely small and fast, but the two and a half gallon tank needed constant refueling. Not to mention, it was also incredibly unstable, with the rear skis fishtailing any time they got the chance. It had basically no suspension, making bumps feel like potholes, and the short length meant that flipping the sled or getting yeeted by a snow divot was just way too easy. So I spent the past couple months chatting with the WISE task force, doing research, and brainstorming designs to fix the problems from last year. Surprisingly, we discovered that some of the earliest snowmobiles were actually also thrust powered. And you can tell these are old because they're all black and white. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Anyway, after months of R&D, here's what we came up with. Look, if I just wanted to cheat on my work, I would've used ChatGPT, but while this might look like light plagiarism, that's actually an accident. At roughly six feet long and 30 inches wide, it's nearly four times the footprint of last year's sled, with a 12 gallon tank carrying four times the fuel and the full suspension steering system quartering four times as hard. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't know if that's true. This design actually just borrows the best elements from everything we came up with, and it's gonna be way better than the old version, assuming I can actually build it. With about two weeks until my angle attempt, I started by getting some basic materials and a couple sets of snowmobile skis from a used parts store nearby. These skis are ideal for the sled because the carbide runners will dig into the ground, preventing the fishtailing problems from last time. Next, I cut some one inch square tubing, laid it out, and tack welded it to form the base of the frame. I look fly as hell on this, right? <laughs> the ladies love a welder. After a gut check with the skis, I finished the base and added a raised mount for the jet before permanently welding everything together. I'll probably reinforce this by tying it back to the main part of the frame eventually, but for now, I think it's good. I'm a little bit nervous because this is my first time welding a frame and it really needs to work. This design borrows elements from a lot of off-road go-karts, but especially the suspension and steering. I extended the front of the frame to make room for the steering rack, built upward for support, and welded on tabs to mount the suspension. This go-kart suspension kit is probably the most important addition to the whole build, because absorbing bumps means less fatigue for the rider and less wear on the jet engine. Frame's getting better. Also heavier, but, but better. But of course, crossing the angle takes a lot more than just a well-built sled. It also takes a solid weather window, which is why I was nervous when I got a call from my friend Tanner. Tanner's a storm chaser, so he understands weather patterns way better than I do. For the run, I needed sub-freezing temperatures to keep the snow firm, but no precipitation, because with such small skis, the sled won't float well, making powder runs impossible. With no major snowfall on the lake for weeks before, hard, cold snow looked like a certainty, except for one small problem. It looks like the bad day is actually gonna be on Saturday, not Sunday. 
That's actually fine. The good news is the prediction we found said it mostly dodged the northernmost parts of the state, so while the highways would be boned, as long as we got there Friday night, we should be good to start testing on Sunday. But that meant one last day to finish the sled, so I had to crank it into overdrive. After adding mounts for the fuel tank, I built a set of custom fork mounts for my front skis, and I modified the suspension kit to be compatible, removing the wheel hubs, chopping off the shafts, and welding steel plates in their place. All right, I think we're in business. To top it off, I added a precision steering system and modified it for handlebars to give me more control. And after getting the Rocketman seal of approval, we slapped on a coat of paint, threw in the back of Buddy's car, and headed up to the lake. We're there! We made it! Woo! Of course, if you've ever been to summer camp, you know that boys reek, so living in a house together for five days would have been a horrible experience without Native Today's sponsor. Queen bed, there's another bed? Oh my god. And then I've been using native deodorant for about the past year and I absolutely love it. Unlike a lot of deodorants, it's not sticky, it feels dry while applying it, and you can even get it in plastic free packaging, which I really appreciate. Most importantly for us though, it smells fantastic without being overpowering. My favorite scent is the lavender rose because I love the smell of lavender, but the citrus and musk is great if you like a classic scent with a little bit of spice, and the cucumber mint is super light and refreshing. We're not done. We're not done yet. It's also aluminum free, paraben free, cruelty free, and vegan, so you can feel really good about using it. We've got laundry and like the largest two car garage. You can use my link and code WISE to get 20% off your entire first online order from Native. So even if you already use it, it's a great chance to stock up and save, which I've already done. Though I might have overcommitted. Thanks again to Native, now back to the vid. Things were looking great when we arrived, but the next day we woke up to this. All right, so we're just gonna pull up on the lake right now. It's pretty blizzardous outside. The weather looks great, honestly. Like, yeah, just look like, Dude, it looks... We can do this. <laughs> How hard this could it be? So this bite's hard. It is so Damn. start to be like this we need to head back immediately because th like this is how you freeze to death on the ice conditions like this because you can't see and you're not gonna be able to find your way to shoulder it's gnarly it's crazy bro why are we running because it's cold if too much snow accumulates it could make crossing the lake impossible but at this point we were in too deep and with only four days to use the house there was no time to waste we mounted up a brand new jet engine and attached a custom grip throttle created by my friend adri from the wise task force Where are they holding a controller literally it's so much better than holding that was that was the bad it was that we spent the rest of the day hooking up electronics and getting everything ready so we could test the sled first thing in the morning. All right, sick. I think it's time to test the sled. Dude, the neighborhood is gonna hate us. Buddy, open the bay door. Showtime! Replug. Try that one more time. like this we're f***ed anyway. But look, it's actually floating pretty well. We might have enough power to cross the angle. We, we might be alright. Uh, how do I get this back now, actually? Jet powered sled, my guy. Let's go. Definitely needs some work. Like, look at the battery. The electronics still needed a little tinkering, but ultimately the sled was working, thankfully, which meant the next thing to worry about was conditions on the lake. So we met up with my buddy Houston, a lake guide, to help us go scope it out. How's it going? It's been too long, dude. Long time no How are you? You're going to be how we figure out how to get across this thing because we really don't know the lake. Sorry, dude, bro. this snow is like. Pretty good. Yeah. I think we can cross the angle. I mean, it's not gonna be easy. No. It's 40 
miles. Yeah. Sure. Lewis, I feel scared. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little Are you a little bit terrified? Lucky for us, the lake looked fantastic, but I couldn't say the same for our snowmobile. It won't turn off. Look, kill switch. Okay, did Buddy forget to put the cap on the uh, coolant? Buddy! I don't know how I didn't see it coming, but the ancient snowmobile we bought for the attempt last year was having all kinds of issues. And with its current rate of fuel consumption, <laughs> Oh uh, man, we're we're idiots. Like I understand it now, but at the time it really seemed like a good idea. The original plan was to have the sled carry all our extra gear and spare fuel, but clearly there was no way we could trust this to cross the lake, let alone make it back. And we only had about a day and a half until the run, so we needed a new support car stat. And after spending the day asking around town with no success, I finally remembered Eric. No, no, this Eric. Eric is a lake guide I met last year, and he's the proud owner of a literal snow tank. And while it's not the fastest, it's super reliable and capable of carrying all the gear we'll need on the ice. And even with less than 24 hours notice, he said yes. Dude, Eric is the GOAT! So with a support car secured, I could finally focus on the run. And with an early start slated for the next morning, I'd need all the sleep I could get. It's dawning on me just how far 40 miles is. At this point, it's not like necessarily even a desire to do it as much as it is like a need. Since I came out here last year, there's been this feeling inside of me. You just kept pushing, you could have made the lane. Like you could have done it. All right, let's go. halfway there he's gonna go all crap i got so much further to go <laughs> starting just off the southeast coast of the lake in four mile bay we'll first launch northward toward garden island without gps on the sled i'll be relying on snow markers to guide my way and this first 20 miles is risky because i'm the furthest from land in every direction and a wrong turn could mean going into canada illegally once i'm there i'll continue on past a handful of smaller islands and once we reach oak it's just five more miles to young's bay america's northernmost point it's riding really good. Which way do I go? Dead ahead? Yeah, he's pulling away from us. We're doing 23 miles an hour right now. 22 miles an hour. And home dog is just gone. Like, he is. I don't even see him anymore. <laughs> He looks like he's already a third of the way there on one tank of gas. One tank of gas? Dude, we are so... you know how much fuel we have back there? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is the sled is working super freaking well. We are crushing it. Bad news is I seem to have lost the support car. Not the best. I also don't have my phone because we're using it to fly the drone. There he is. Dang. Uh, it's great. It's low on gas. It needs more gas. Think yeah. guess how far you are. Five miles. You're about ten miles from where we started. Yes, baby. Let's go. We're gonna make it to the freaking angle. We're like twenty five percent of the way already. Yeah. I might have to slow down so you guys can get some shots. I didn't know this thing had a built-in heater. All right, I'll meet you guys at the island. Did I take a wrong turn? Your postco. Right, but well you went left. We're gonna have to freelance it here for a little while to this next island, and that's where we're gonna have lunch. So there's the big island on the left. That's the one we're going to. Yep. After passing Garden Island, the next stop was lunch, but while we can't refuel the jet in midair, we can definitely refuel me. I'm really hungry. 
I think we should cook some hot dogs. But we don't have a grill, guys. Well, we have a jet. We got some ketchup. We got ketchup. But most Where, importantly, where's the dogs, bro? Most importantly, dog. we Where? got the dogs. The dogs. The dogs. With our bellies full of jet cooked meat, things were looking great, but not two miles off the coast of Oak Island, this happened. What's up? Uh, I don't know. Could be that I didn't charge this battery enough or something. We're gonna plug in the ground support unit. This is the screen that we use to diagnose problems with the jet. Oh, low battery. Baller! I'll try booting it up again. What do you have in terms of a tow rope? Oh, I got a good tow rope. Woo! Woo! <laughs> maybe I forgot to charge the battery, or maybe we cooked one too many jet dogs, but either way, I wasn't going down without a fight. So we towed the sled to the currently closed lodge and begged them to let us in to charge it, to which they agreed. We didn't have enough time to charge it fully, but I just needed enough juice for the last few miles to the angle, and hopefully this would be enough. We're making it to the angle. Yeah. That We're, cabin over there. That cabin over there, and then you've made it. And bro. that's where the pole is? That's where the pole is. Let's go! Let's go, guys! The angle, here we come! <laughs> Woo! Let's go! Super different. Do we uh Can we explore the angle? <laughs> Can we explore oh, the angle? angle? And after a taste of some delicious angle beer, we asked about the local points of interest. What's what's there to see up here? I guess there's Jim's Corner. Well, I mean, I wouldn't really call that a sightseeing adventure. So <laughs> <laughs> Jim's Corner is where you FaceTime a border agent to tell what customs you're coming to at? Canada. No, do not. No, no, no. no. It's the iPad. The iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Report arrival. We're gonna get deported. <laughs> and since you'll probably never come here, here's the tour. Pro shop, gas pump, hockey rink, bathroom shack, and this massive block of ice. The fact that we can catalog every site in the angle in a 15 second bit. I mean, there's just not a lot here. <laughs> 